We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started Hey, thanks for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. This will help us grow. Also note, buying some of our merchandise or donating to our channel is very helpful also. Thank you for supporting our show. Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Street. Yes, Easy Street, which is a half hour podcast that we have for Good Talk Radio. And uh, you can find, uh, obviously you can find Easy Street on Good Talk Radio, plays daily. Also, uh, if you just go to goodtalkradio.com, go to schedule and you can find out when it's playing. We also are on Spreaker and several other platforms, including our own uh, platforms. So check it out. Go down to the description below. You can find out where Easy Street's all about. What we talk about in the show is pretty much anything we want to talk about. Um, and today, I just want to talk about concerns. And uh, my worry is that there's a lot of things going on. <clears throat> and our media is not helping because they don't seem to put emphasis on little things like shortages and things like that. Now, I'm not here to talk about gloom and doom or shit hits the fan type thing. What I really want to talk about is awareness and paying attention. So, for example, the housing situation. Um, I finally got kind of a good explanation of what's going on with housing. So, basically, here's the gist of it. Uh, they say housing's up. Well, that's true. And the reason it's up is because the feds have lower interest, interest rates so low that you can actually buy a house at about two and a half percent. That's outstanding, but not good for the banks. And I'll explain that in a minute. So what's happening is a lot of people also bailing from the cities because now they can figure out they don't have to necessarily work at the cities. Uh, the schools are a mess and they are going out towards the suburbs, not necessarily out to the country. So what does that do to the banks? Well, the banks have got all these brand new loans coming out, 30 year fixed, two and a half percent interests and stuff. And what the problem is, is uh, the hold the stock markets and the banks, everything the way it is, the United States have been uh, pumping money into the, the markets and, and buying up uh, loans and stuff. The thing is, is inflation's gonna hit because we cannot keep our interest rates this low. Uh, it's just capitalism doesn't work that way. So they will eventually go up. So imagine thousands of these um, mortgages that are only making 2% interest, that's their income, and yet the money that they're using is costing more that they're getting from the feds. And uh, so as interest goes up from the federal side of things, the banks will start losing money big time. And so there's a, a bombshell waiting to happen right there. So uh, the other problem that happened is when that happens, um, and of course we got unemployment so high and stuff like that, the market, people that can qualify for loans right now is going down, down, down. So what's gonna happen is right now, the inventory is high in the suburbs and the country areas. The problem that's gonna happen is more people can't qualify for loans two interest rates will go up they have to um and uh unemployed you know with people that can't make their mortgages there's a, a lot of defaults happening so what's going to happen is um houses are going to be abandoned people can't afford to keep, keep them um and the value of the houses are going to drop so you may have a forty thousand four hundred thousand dollar house drop down to 250 over a matter of time so uh, the likelihood of those uh, house getting back up to that price would be years and years and years and years. It means you're, you're either stuck or they walk away from their houses or they can't afford their mortgages. So uh, uh, anyway, so that's not a good picture. 
And then, uh, of course, with this uh, virus stuff going on, um, all the companies are backing off on their production. So appliances are definitely becoming a problem to get. So what's happened is companies that us usually used to make, say, two, 20,000 stoves, well, because the workforce and all the uh, uh, um, spacing and all that stuff for people uh, for safety and the whole works, they've reduced their production down to maybe 10,000. But the demand has gone up to like 30,000. So what's happening is all these things like refrigerators and freezers and things like that are getting harder to get and uh, waiting lists are long. Not impossible. So my concern is that I don't think we're going into uh, shit hit the fan kind of situation as we are that our lives are going to get very inconvenient and uh, uh, we're seeing our lumber go up we're seeing metals go up shortage on aluminum go up and food uh, being processed uh, the government's you know shutting down farms workers even our uh, uh, immigrants, uh, illegals, are having a hard time working because they don't want to be tested for COVID. And uh, so the farms are either just letting things rot, uh, the processing companies can't keep up. And that goes for regular food and it goes for your meat, uh, meat products. So what I'm concerned about is the media doesn't want to talk about it. All they want to do is, you know, talk about, you know, they're a business, they're in the ratings. And so they're just plugging the buzzwords and then they tend to be leaning to the left, obviously. Um, so they don't want to talk about gloom and doom, especially before elections and stuff. So uh, the problem is, for those who don't watch alternative news or don't watch any of the cable stuff and, and jump around to the different, not just one, but several, uh, they're not actually hearing about the food shortages. They're not actually hearing the stories about shortages and appliances and raw materials. And uh, so when they go to Walmart and they're just like, oh, this week they don't seem to have any cereal. Um, or the variety is really low. So they just think it's a, a Walmart problem, but it's not. And if you go to Walmart nowadays, especially in our area, you can see that they're actually stocking their shelves differently to make it look like that their inventories look good. The thing is, it's not being reported why this is happening. And it is shortages. And obviously uh, weather has been a factor and no, I do not believe that uh, global warming is from man alone. And I don't really think changing our ways are going to make a factor. I think this is a normal cycle of the earth. Why? Because, ha tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> have they not found, uh, when they do diggings or look at history and things like that, that the climate was really warm at one time and they're actually finding... Uh, jungle type material and places that are frozen now and vice versa the, the earth is always changing and uh, so it's going through one of its cycles uh, things we can do to be you know like thinning our forest uh, being uh, more a uh, lot more careful with the safety of a uh, fire and things like that uh, those are things we can do to help prevent the damage and then some things we can't do a darn thing about when a hurricane or wind storms go through Iowa and wipe it all out. What could they have done? How much money could you spend to try to stop that and realize you can't? It's it's an act of nature. Uh, so what I want to talk about is trying to wake people up. Wait, if you're listening to this show. All I'm saying is observe a little deeper, go deeper into what you're noticing. Don't rely on mainstream media because their agenda is much different than yours. If you just want to hear the bells and whistles simulated how much you hate Trump or something like that, yeah, go ahead and watch it. But the problem is you're not doing yourself a favor because things are happening 
and is not being reported on normal mainstream. And you almost have to go to things like Fox, and even Fox is not reporting at all, but even more like Blaze TVs and some of the alternative news is that will actually let you know that there is an issue out there. Okay, I had to pause there for a second. Uh, I'm back. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is I think we do have some serious, serious problems. Now, I'm not going to go uh, whose fault it is or whatever, but the thing is if you're not paying attention, you could be in trouble. Um, just simple things right now are getting really tough, like people that want to preserve food. Getting jars right now, of course, this is kind of the preserving jarring time, canning time, they call it. Um, and yeah, so the usage is high. Are we out of jars and stuff? No. Production is just lower. And so it's not keeping up with the demand right now. So that's just one example of hundreds and hundreds. Um, so do you have the skills to say what happens if some reason they can't provide bread? Um, can you make your own bread? And then the next question is, is there enough flour? Do you know how to work with flour or yeast or any of those kind of things to make to make bread? And so I'm trying to change your way of thinking of, okay, what are some of the things that we really enjoy in our family? Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Well, instead of just buying one jar of jelly, start buying two at each time as it, and let it add up. And then rotate what you have. Peanut butter, same thing. If the kids really like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, then uh, start buying extra peanut butter. Pay attention to what you're eating today. Just because times could get tough doesn't mean you can't eat the foods you enjoy. But realize and pay attention to the stores. Pay attention to their inventory. Pay attention to how long they might be out of something. And when it is in stock, maybe you should buy a little more. Hoarding is not what I'm talking about here. You can do this gradually. I really don't think we're going to see the real bad parts of this until after the first of the year in 2021. I think we're going to see our houses start flipping the other way. And I think whatever the deal is with the shortages, because they're not giving us a whole story, is going to reveal itself real soon, especially when most local farmers and things like that aren't producing local foods that normally the United States switches over to other countries to get things like tomatoes because our season's over with, but down south they're not. And and certain things uh, 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 might start revealing themselves. I, I really truly think so. Uh, and of course, to start looking at alternative ways to make money. So, uh, or the fact that things really got tough, uh, what could you hold a value that's better than a dollar bill? Because if things really got tough and, and, and the banks have some trouble, uh, cash is not necessarily the answer to everything. Uh, of course, gold and silver is always good to have, but let's, let's not go there other than the fact that uh, if you want to replace your money with something that's stable, uh, silver and metal is the way to go. But what's what's next? What's better than that? Old things like having a garden, uh, having extra ammunition, having uh, resources that maybe your neighbors don't have, uh, where you guys can help each other. And this lone wolf thing that you hear people say, well, I'm just going to get a bug out bag and I'm going to live in the woods. Uh, it's probably the worst thing you could do. You're just a walking target. Um, and, and, and what's really cool about walking targets is once you take out that walking target, <laughs> what's in their backpack is all valuable. You don't have to search around at all. Just take the pack. And you're good to go. Um, so my next thing is start getting to know your neighbors. Uh, like I, we live in big lots here, like five acre lots and stuff. I have yet to meet the neighbor across the street. Um, but I am actually, when I see the opportunity pulling over, if I happen to see him or 
uh, taking an extra time to stop by and just introducing ourselves and then try to find out what things each other are into and we may find each other to have resources like hey they may not be in the gardening but they're really into livestock and uh, hey there sounds like some good trading it could go on and it's like California is going through nightmares of brownouts and things like that and obviously the fires and uh, of course you know there could be natural disasters from earthquakes and stuff like that I ask everybody to start work living in the what-if scenarios um, I don't think people should go off grid and try to find you know some 500 acres to go live on and become mountain people that's not for everyone but I do say it's a good idea to get away from the cities because the cities are losing control and there's this stuff going on that all of us just don't understand and uh, so uh, eventually we do have to make a stand where is it better to do that uh, in a uh, place a little bit farther away from the cities and there's communities and well-armed people um, and people that know how to deal with no electricity or no water or uh, public stuff uh, they have alternative ways of living so getting to know your community working as a community and if nothing happens great not a problem yeah, now at least you know your neighbors uh, now you have a beautiful garden uh, now you have lots of ammo in the background and now you just go shooting for fun um, what's it gonna hurt to have some extra food uh, stop going to the grocery store and start using up what you have in your supplies um, no harm done so I'm not asking you to do something that's really inconvenient uh, I'm saying do it while you still can and uh, some people say was well, it too late to start prepping it's never too late to start prepping um, yes I may have six to eight months of supplies here but uh, you can start building yourself up to two months supply three months supply over time um, but buy the things you know you'll eat and buy the things that you know you can repack jar and maybe a vacuum seal with one of those vacuum sealers and a little cap that goes on top of jars and you can prolong things like uh, uh, rice and, and flour and things like that by taking them out of their original packages putting them into those things and give them a longer shelf life very simple things and fun to learn some new stuff um, I, I just if anything you're gonna learn some new tricks um, us we bought property and now we have chickens and now we're learning how to preserve our eggs uh, if I see any indication that we really have a, a, a meat issue uh, my next year I'm actually gonna probably start doing meat chickens you say well how's that that's going to cost more mm, not necessarily more but give me more value on a dollar I could raise a hundred meat chickens literally have the chicks sent in and in less than three months they're ready to butcher and with a hundred meat chickens you will have the result of over four to five hundred pounds of chicken to put in your freezers now think about the cost of that that's a bargain compared to like trying to raise a cow or something um, the other thing it can really be practical is if food is a shortage but our local farmers are doing all right is to start looking into co-ops uh, looking into for example there's a I got cattle all around us in different parts of our region is uh, I just got done buying a quarter of a beef I didn't have to raise it didn't have to water it didn't have to feed it um, I just had to give them money for my portion of the cost and the cost for my meat turned out to be around 450 to five dollars a pound um, uh, it could be higher but still it's one is you got really good meat to uh, uh, to you knew it you know where it came from and uh, you could stock up the freezer pretty good and yes I just bought another freezer and that was a not an easy task uh, it was just a seven cubic foot uh, chest freezer uh, where I'm out kind of the country a little bit smaller towns uh, I actually bought like the last one that was available at one particular store because the other two stores what I saw the week before were all gone so uh, 
yeah, there's something wrong out there. And that's what I'm trying to tell you is, is pay attention to what's going on. Find other ways of hearing some of the news and start reading articles and stuff from other sources on the internet that are telling you what's going on. And you need to also pay attention to what's going on worldwide. Our media is so focused on politics and issues uh, that they're actually not informing you that, you know, we got some things going on overseas that are concerning and we should keep our eye on. But um, the, the real news is, is we got to take care of ourselves. Um, there's a large, large population out there, what we call um, <laughs> uh, soft people, let's say. And uh, they just have no clue. They're, they're, they're in a life of electronics and don't hold all these simple skills of uh, little things. I mean, the simplest things of cutting up wood or, or finding uh, how, to, how to fish or hunt or anything like that. They're really uh, useless to, as a person, say, of the past. Um, they're living a whole different life. It's a PC life. And uh, uh, us rednecks have kind of nicknames for people like that. <laughs> I um, I'll just say soft. So, uh, not all the young folks are soft. Some of them have realized what's going on and you actually will find a few millennials, uh, especially doing YouTube channels, doing some amazing things of going back to basics and, uh, and having fun doing it. And they are amazing. And what they're learning is, is history and facts and ways of doing things that were done a hundred years ago and, and learning how to preserve and how to raise their own food and be more self-sufficient and self-reliant. And that's what I'm asking you to do is like, maybe you ought to start thinking about that stuff. Take baby steps. But if you don't do anything, you may find yourself going, oh my gosh, I can't make this mortgage anymore. Oh my gosh, we don't have any backup food. Oh my gosh, where am I going to go? Because um, no one's going to help you. The government and food, I mean, the f food banks are already backed up. Um, and you'll get that kind of help, but that's limited too. The government's not going to bail you out. And it's, you can see the stimulus checks are already slowing down. Arguments out there of uh, how they're going to do anything because the government is what brought on all this hardship all of a sudden, uh, along with other natural things. And so they're trying to make sure people still have uh, money in their pockets and uh, able to make things happen. But yeah, so it's funny, they make a moratorium on people don't have to pay their rent. But what you're not paying attention to is the people that own those buildings still do. So what do you think is going to happen when they can't get the income to pay their commercial buildings off? They're going to be foreclosed on. And you may be out in the street anyway. So follow, the, follow it through. Just because you're getting help in that area, common sense tells you you still need to be aware that you better find a better way of life. If you have to move back home, move in with another family, uh, although that's not the funnest thing to do, it may be the smartest thing to do. And of course, get out of debt. Uh, if you have a chunk of change and you're just like, you're just not paying off those credit cards and stuff, I would suggest that you get those things taken care of while you can. Uh, I am practicing everything I'm preaching here. So, uh, if you follow our channel on, on the Ranger Rob Country Living channel, you will see day to day what we're doing to be more self-sufficient, how we're preparing a garden system, how we're preparing uh, to uh, uh, get through hard times if they come. If they don't come, cool. I just got a lot of extra food and I'll have uh, more company over. <laughs> you guys want to come over for burgers? Got lots of them. Anyway, so... Um, I just want to be known as someone that says, 
I practice what I preach or I, I don't even want to be a pre I'm not preach. I'm not preaching. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm trying to wake you up to say, look around, pay attention, look at other sources for your news and really pay attention in the stores. How many times have you been inconvenienced from something like I was watching one channel. Somebody couldn't find toasters. All the stores were out of toasters. It's like the one time I actually need a toaster, which you don't buy that often, they're not available. What is up with that? So pay attention to all the things that you have been using and buying and uh, see if you're being affected. And then compensate. Start countermeasures to be prepared for shortages. If you're somebody that really likes sauerkraut, and you see sauerkraut's getting less and less and everything. So buy extra sauerkraut. Um, it'll probably come back. Things won't stay like this forever. Um, it's a natural process for countries to go through recessions, but I think we're closer to the word depression. And uh, I'm just trying to make you guys wake up and quit ignoring the obvious. And if, if I wasn't, I'm talking about things that you can physically see with your eyes that something is wrong and find out why and don't try to do it through main media. They're sensationally uh, making news that will get you to come back. They don't really care about telling you that a whole bunch of farmers can't produce food and food is rotting on the vine. Things can't be produced. You're not hearing about that. But you should be and the fires they won't tell you the truth of what's going on out there yes there's some natural fire things there but there's also a lot of people and cappy cats going out there and and causing more havoc by starting more fires and they're loving it um, I'm not making this stuff up guys go find out for yourselves so anyway I want to thank you very much for listening to easy street uh, once again, go to Good Talk Radio where you can hear it, or you can uh, all the links below will show you where you can find Easy Street. I uh, love to hear your comments. Uh, if you're interested in being on a show, please contact us. Uh, we have our own Facebook page of Easy Street. Come check us out. So, guys, be safe, be aware, and pay attention. Thanks for listening, and have a wonderful day. Bye, guys. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.